Hey guys, welcome to another micro lesson. Today we're going to be learning how to set up a grid system or a layout grid over in Figma so that you can make sure that your websites are looking really great on desktop, but they are very responsive as they go down from a desktop sized um, screen to a tablet down to a mobile device. So let's head over to Figma. So I will set, I will show you how to set it up. We'll look at some examples. We are going to look at some best practices and then how to make sure that you have this set up on all your projects. So let's go. Fantastic. So now that we are here in Figma, if you are new to what this is or what a layout, a 12 column layout grid is, it's pretty much the box where everything or all the elements on your website are going to be inside of, right? And sometimes you may want to break this grid sometimes or most companies um, that you may be designing for, especially if they're like tech companies, you may want to stay within the grid and be able to use it very professionally. If you're used designing for, let's say a hotel, you may want to be able to have elements um, spread out throughout the grid or even for your own portfolio, you may want to choose that. But in this case, we're going to be looking at some tech companies that you will see where they keep everything within the grid. Um, so the first thing that we have to look at is the size of our frame. And for most web designing projects, I like to choose the 1400 pixels um, wide frames just because it gives me enough space to be able to place everything I need and then scale it when I need to and then be able to make it responsive for different devices when I need to. So for you to do that, just head over to your frames here in Figma, choose the desktop or the wireframe. Either one of these will work perfectly. And then you will pretty much just get an empty frame like this one. And then what I want you to do is that I'm just going to delete this one so I can show you how to set up your frames. Um, what I want you to do next, and this is going to depend on, depend on the container width that you're using throughout your projects. For me, I am using uh, most likely a 1200 uh, pixel wide container in width. So what I will do is I will just set up a box here. And this box is going to be 1200 pixels wide. I'm going to center it. And then I'm going to select my frame and then I'm going to go over to layout grid. I'm going to click on the plus symbol here. Then I'm going to click on this here because I don't want this sort of grid. This is sort of what you might have been seeing on like Adobe Illustrator on Photoshop, um, which tells you all the pixels, but we want to use a column grid. So we want to start with a 12 column grid and this can be 10. And depending on the size of your screen, you might even go up to 24. But overall, we always start with 12 column grids. And then what I want to do is I want to make sure like all my elements are going to stay within this box. So what I want to do is I want to set my margin from left to right to 120. And that way I know for sure that everything is going to be there. Um, just something else I'd like to do when I'm setting up a grid is going to be using my rulers. So just put two rulers right here. And that is because sometimes when I'm designing, I don't want to see what this looks like. I just want to hide it for a moment, but I want to still make sure that I know where my grid is finishing or ended. So now that I have this set up, I'm going to go ahead and delete my box. And we can do the exact same thing for tablet, right? So on tablet, you won't have 12, you will have eight columns. Um, and then you can set up your margin to be 64 so that you have enough space on left and right and then when we move over to mobile i would recommend that you choose the smallest frame for mobile possible and that will be this one the uh, iphone se and then on that one what we're going to do for our layout grid system is that we're going to choose four columns and we can give it a margin of 24 you can also try a margin of 16 um, the whole idea is to make sure that your margins, um, just make things easier on you, is that they are divisible by four. Same thing with your pattern, same thing with your font sizes, um, spacing system and all that. So now you have it here. We have three, we have our desktop, we have our iPad or tablet, and we also have our iPhones. So the next thing you may be asking is, okay, so these are columns. Then how many rows do I need? And the reality is like, 
I don't really focus much on rows because if you have a very long website, you are going to need hundreds of these. What I might do, and as you can see here, is that I do have the grid um, system, the one that you may be using in um, Adobe Illustrator and whatnot, and that I do set it up to be eight points or eight pixels. So each of these little boxes that you're seeing here, of these bigger boxes, are eight pixels, and that way I'm able to place elements um, within those boxes and that way everything looks very organized and easy for me to read and then another way that you can see how that works is when you're setting up and this is a bit more advanced when you're setting up other layouts you will be able to make sure that all your elements are ending within that um those red boxes so let's take a look at how some companies have used this right um as i said before we'll, i'll mainly be looking at tech companies so they tend to stay within the grid systems quite a lot they don't usually break them sometimes they do sometimes they don't what you will see here though is that maybe some of these um, containers that they are using for their websites are quite bigger um, mainly because i took this through on a really large desktop a 32 inch monitor so then those container width will be quite big um, but you can see that everything remains within these 12 columns. This is on my website. I personally have a very long um, container that I'm using for all this. I think it's 1400 pixels in width. So it's pretty much this entire size, right? I'm almost going edge to edge on large desktops. Um, this is with ramp. You can see they're stacking all their cards within this. Um, Amazon does something very similar as well. And then here's more from ramp. And I just want to show you this example so that you can see how we kept everything within the grid system, but then we were able to make it responsive by also using a grid system to make sure everything lines up on mobile. So this is for a tech company that we work with um, to design some of their landing pages. So as you can see, I have here my um, 12 column grid. On this one, I chose a 64 pixels margin and I'm using a 32 pixels in gutter that's the space between each column in your grid system and as you can see everything here all my boxes are lining up to end to end right um, here it's a little difficult let's just make the red on the columns a bit brighter there we go that's quite bright but you can see that everything is ending where these lines are, right? And then I'm using one, two, three, four, five, six columns for the images, and then another six columns here, and six columns here for the text. And what will happen to is that a developer will come and take a look at this and be like, okay, well, I have 12 columns on my CSS um, style guide. So what I will do is I will give this element six columns, and I'll give this element six columns. Um, and that's why it's so important for you to be able to master the grid system because if you're not designing, developing your own websites and someone else comes to do that part of the project, they need to be able to see where everything will fit so that they can make sure that they are making a pixel perfect um, developed website. And as you can see, everything fits here. On this one, we went narrower a little bit. On this, we're almost edge to edge. Back here on the footer, we have, we're working within the grid system thing on mobile you can see how everything now lines up uh, we made the buttons much larger because we're looking at the small device so we want to make sure that those fingers can touch all these buttons so what i did is i went um full width on my buttons um taking over the full four column grid oh and then here you're going to see the same thing happens here on mobile i think we're using 16 pixels we're using 32 pixels margin actually from here to here so figma you can do this you can see like we have where we are so it's about 31 still probably need to go in a little bit more um but you can see where everything fits everything fits quite nicely so on here we have left to right but because we are using that 12 column system and now we're moving to a four column system what i did is i just wrap everything under um, and that way everything looks quite organized you still get to see the same experience that you had on the desktop version but on your mobile version so guys that's it for this micro lesson um, i'm going to be creating a full beginner's course of figma so that you can see how to use it how to 
really get um, to work on a web project or a product design project if you have to um, it will teach you everything that you need to know so stay tuned for that one and i will see you in the next one bye